Hey you all there, hope your day is going great. In this video you will learn how to create the add project view, including the front end part and then actually submitting the form using Django Forms. What you can see on the screen is a preview of how it's going to be functioning, including the name and budget field which are quite simple. And then there's another field called the expense categories field, where the user can type in the category they want to enter in and then hit the enter key and it will be added to an unordered list. And the way this is going to be functioning is that we have another input field which the user doesn't see because it's hidden and it's going to keep track of all of the categories while the user is entering them in or actually as soon as he removes it and then they are going to be separated by a comma so as soon as we submit the form we can then split the entire string by a comma and get all of the categories that way. You're going to see it in action later on. And now that you know what we're going to build, let's jump right in. We want to start out in the URLs file by creating a new path, which will lead to add. And the view is going to be called view. And then we want to call the function called .asView, because this is going to be a generic class view. And the name should be equal to add. Now in the views file we can first of all import the create view from django.views.generic import create view which is the generic view which is perfectly fine in our case and then the class project create view will subclass from the create view so this is the actual view and we want to specify the model which should be equal to the project. Then we want to specify the template template name, which will be located under budget and add project.html. And the fields will only be the name and the budget. Because as I said, the categories add field is going to function in a, another way. But these two will function correctly just the way they are. Next up, go into the budget folder and add a new file called addproject.html. And in here we want to start out like in all of the other files. So extends the budget base.html. Then block content and end block. And up above that we actually want to load static because we are going to use the static tag in a minute. We now want to create a container and inside of the container we have a form and the action is going to be fine and the method will be post. So in the form we will want to spit out the CSRF token because that's needed for us to be able to post it because that's a security measurement from Django. And then we can spit out the form, which only contains the name and the budget. And now we want to manually add the categories field. First of all, create a label and the form is going to be category input. And this is going to say expense categories. Hit enter after every category. Just a little instruction for what we want to use it to do. And then we can create the actual input with the ID of category input and the name should be category input as well. And then we are going to add in a hidden input, which is basically going to concatenate all of the categories which the user entered in and put a comma between all of the categories so that we can separate them. And the type is going to be hidden instead of text. And the name will be categories string. You'll be seeing the logic of how this functions later on. And then we want to create the unordered list, which is going to hold all of our allies, which are the categories that the user gets displayed for the ease of use. So the URL is going to have an ID of categories container. And in here we can put the allies. So let's just make one for demonstration and add the category class. And then inside of it, we want to have a span with the class of name. 
and just going to simply say development. And then another span, which is going to be the X button, which the user can hit to remove the category. And this is going to have an onclick of remove category. And we can pass the this. Again, we're going to create the remove category function later on in the JavaScript. And the class should be btn remove. And also bold. And instead of using font awesome, I'm just simply going to use an X because that will be fine in our case. And we can copy this li and paste it two more times to see how it will look. And first of all, go to the add route. And yeah, you see it doesn't look nicely yet, so go in your styles.css file and we can add another comment, project add view. And this is simply going to target the form, URL and the LI with the name of category. And in here we can set the display to inline block and the background color to white. And let's add in a padding of 5 pixels for top and bottom and then 10 for left and right. Okay, that's better. And I want more margin. Margin right should be 5 pixels. And I like that. Okay, now we can go on and add the button which is the last thing missing. So underneath all of that we want a button with the type of submit and the class of btn which is going to say start project. Okay that's fine. And now we want to create the javascript file to be able to enter in these just by typing in a category and hitting enter. So first of all in the static folder create a new folder called js and a new file called script.js. I could give it a better name, but since we have only one script, it will be fine. So I want to start this out with a self-executing function, and then execute it. And everything we put inside of here will be executed as soon as the entire page is loaded. We want to start out by capturing the key down event of the category input, document or query selector and target the ID of category input. And then we can call the add event listener method for the key down event. And the function is going to take the E. So if the E dot key code is not equal to 13, we want to return because 13 is the key code for the enter key. So if the user types in anything but the enter key, we don't want to proceed any further because that means that they are simply still typing in the name of the category they want to enter in. And as soon as they are here, we know that they now want to submit it. So we can capture the category name and set it equal to this dot value. And then we can clear the value field. So they don't need to go in and erase everything manually if they want to enter in another category. And now we can call add new category with the category name and we'll be creating this function shortly. And also we want to call a method called update, update categories string, which will make sure to actually take care of updating the category string where we concatenate all of the categories with a comma as I said and actually at the top of everything we want to call e.prevent default because normally when we hit the enter key we of course want to submit the form and in this case it should be prevented for the input field outside of that we can create a function called add new category which takes a name And now we want to append an ally to the end of the URL. First of all, target the actual container with the query selector. 
and then the ID of categories container. And there's a nice method called insert adjacent HTML. And in here we can specify the position, which will be before end, before end. And the second argument will be the actual HTML we want to put in. So we just create a multi-line string. And go back to the add project HTML and we can take an li from here and delete all of the other ones. And just paste it in. And instead of development, we want to use the syntax for injecting the name variable. And first of all, we of course want to make sure that we are calling the script file from add project. So go to the bottom and make a new script tag. And the source will be equal to static. And then we want to select the static file in JS and script.js. Let's see what happens if we enter in dev. Insert adjacent. I've got a typo. Insert adjacent HTML. Of course, it's not defined because we haven't created it yet, but you see that this one already works. And yeah, it works. So now we want to create the update category string method function update categories string. And for this one, we want to add another level of abstraction by setting the categories equal to fetch category array, which will be another function we are going to create. And then we want to document or query selector input name will be equal to categories string. So we want to get the input which has the name of category string and set the value equal to categories dot join comma. And by the way, as you can see, I'm using the query selector quite often. In a, another scenario, I will probably be capturing it so we don't do it that often, but for now, that should be fine. I think it's clear to understand that way. On top of that all, we now want to create a function called fetch category array. And first of all, it has a variable called categories, which will be empty. And at the end, it's going to return the categories. And in the middle of that, we want to call document or query selector all. And we want to select all elements with the class of category and then call for each function, which again takes in the E parameter. We can now set the name of the category equal to E.query selector and select the dot name inside of it and get the inner HTML. Again, if we take a look at how the ally is structured, we select the category. So we have the ally tag. And inside of that, we select the name, which is this one, and then simply get the inner HTML, which is this part, which is the actual category name. And then we can check if name is empty. And if that's the case, we want to return because they simply typed in the enter key without entering anything else. And then we want to push a new name to the categories array. So called categories.push name. And this is basically it for this method. Let's just see how it functions. And we can right click and inspect. And just look for the hidden input. And you see it has the value of development. And if we now enter marketing, it has the value of mar development comma marketing. So yeah, it's working nicely. And that's what we wanted. And next up, we want to take care of removing elements. And this is going to be quite easy. So function remove category. It takes in the E. Yeah, here we pass in the this. And it's going to be the actual element. So now we can call E dot parent element dot remove. Because again, we are simply passing in the span. 
But of course, that's not the only thing we want to remove. We want to remove the actual parent element, which is the li. And now we can again call update categories string. And actually, we need to grab these two functions and put them outside. So we can access the update categories from remove category. And let's hit the X on marketing. And yeah, it's working. And again, I'm not saying that's the best approach, how we're doing it, but it's functioning, which is kind of the main thing we want at the beginning. All of the refactoring can come later. And now that we have that working, we can actually start submitting the form itself, which will be inside of the views. And there's a method we can override called form valid. Text in the self and the form. So we need to set the self.object equal to form.safe with the commit equals false argument. And self.object.safe should also be called. And what we now want to do is grab the categories via the hidden input field, which we updated all of the time. Set categories equal to self.request.post categories string and then we can call dot split and split via the cum character which again is what we use to separate all of the categories and before we proceed we want to import the category model and now for every category we want to create a new category which is bound to the current project for category in categories Category dot objects dot create and set the project equal to project dot object dot get with the ID equal to self dot object dot ID and the name should be equal to category and at the end of that all we want to call dot save and now we want to return an HTTP response redirect to self dot get success URL. So dev get success URL. And if you can remember, we used the slug of the name to get us to the correct path. So we simply have to return slugify the self.request.post name. And import slugify as well from django.utils.text import slugify. And of course, we also have to import the HTTP response redirect function. So from Django.http, import HTTP response redirect. And before we proceed any further, let's go into the app and dashboard and basically delete all of the models we have. Okay, and now we can go to the add view and select a name of first web app and the budget will be 5,000 and categories will be development and marketing and start project and you see the 5,000 and we can just verify the categories by going to the admin dashboard again and go to the categories and you see two new objects, one of which is marketing and the other one is development. So yeah, it's working fine. And the next part will be spending our time working on adding new expenses. I hope you enjoyed guys. This was quite long, I know. So please make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed. And I'll see you inside of the next parts. Cheers.